You're listening to Best Forever's A Podcast for Kindred Spirits, a podcast that encourages you to love more on your friends and to further consider the issues that plague friendships. I'm Elisa Lucas, and I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Classic Ghostbusters 1984. Thank you very much. Um, But here's the thing. I am scared about ghosts, and they stay true to Halloween. They stay as one of the classics that when you have Halloween, you have ghosts. And so when we have Halloween, we need to talk about ghosts and ghosting. So in 2019, I talked about ghosting and friendships in the episode entitled Haunted. And here we are two years later in Ghosting 2.0, still talking about these classic spooky little <laughs> buggers. <laughs> okay, But it's important to continue to talk about it because it seems to be a problem that won't get away. Why can't we get rid of these ghosts? Where are the Ghostbusters? Because we need to bust some ghosts. So let's go. So let's see if this example from a June 2021 Bustle Online article by Caitlin Wild might sound familiar to folks. Quote, your last four messages have gone unanswered. You convince yourself they're having a tough time with work, but they just posted an Instagram story, so they can't be that busy. Your mind races. Are you getting ghosted by a friend? And then confronting a pal who's abruptly faded into thin air isn't an intuitive endeavor because friends are supposed to stick around, end quote. So as a reminder, ghosting, according to an article on Medicine Net from May 2021, quote, ghosting is when someone who used to be friendly or even romantic with you suddenly cuts off all communication without explanation, end quote. And because of no explanation, you might wonder what you've done. And the answer is likely nothing. It reminds me of when you get ghosted for jobs. Yes, that happens. And you just never know. You just never have an explanation for why you didn't get the job, and you might have been fine for the job, but you never know the reason why you didn't get the job because they ghosted you and they didn't talk to you. (laughs) But how will you ever know when it comes to a friend, romantic partner, or a potential job if they never tell you? And thinking back to the bustle example, maybe that friend is busy Maybe they needed some alone time. Maybe they're off the clock and their brain is like, let's focus on, you know, doing our social media, doing some Insta stories. They just needed that time, right? But even if that's the case, when people start to feel that way, it is an experience that people don't want to have. They don't want to have the feelings that are associated with being ghosted, whether that's confusion, frustration, rejection, sadness, anger, whatever it might be. We don't want that. We we don't like the negative feelings, although they are a part of life. We, we really want to hold on to those positive feelings. And so it's almost like we're in some sort of limbo because we don't know. So we're creating all these scenarios in our head. And perhaps we've all hoped that somehow, some way, ghosting would ghost us, phase out like a bad fashion trend, so that none of us ever have to feel bad about losing a friend, potential romantic partner, or even a job ever again. But here's where it gets truly scary, friends. In an article from the Washington Post by Lisa Bonos from February 2020, which Side note, the month before many of us transitioned to online work and school and went into some sort of lockdown, ghosting is described as the new normal. In my 2019 episode, some of the main reasons why people poof right out of other people's lives is because it's easy. Like, I just don't have to respond to a text message or It allows them to be like, you know what, this is going to be awkward, so I'll just send a text message. Then I don't have to, you know, be deep in any awkward feelings or situations. And, of course, it gives them a chance to avoid any confrontation. So if they ghost you and they just sort of phase out, then they don't have to worry about what your response might be, right? So, like, that is a lot of the reasons why you know, ghosting happens. And and the thing about it is I get it. I get why people might do that, right? That we don't like conflict. We want to do something easy. But even if I do understand it and I do get it as the ghoster, it becomes extremely difficult for the person who is being ghosted, 
right? Because they don't have the chance to make it easy. They don't have a chance to remove the awkwardness and they don't have a chance to have that confrontation, which although we might be avoiding it is particularly important to them. So in that same Washington Post article, a psychologist points out that by ghosting it, quote, puts a breakup's emotional labor on the person being dumped when it should rest with the person who wants out. When you break up with someone directly, they can focus on the emotional work of moving on. And and that's an end quote there. And so one of the things is, like, if it's your decision to end something, then that puts the responsibility on you. And it does seem, I mean, as I'm talking about, even though it's, like, easy to, like, skip text messages or voicemails, it does feel a little dirty or a little unfair to put all of that on the person who is not having a say or might not want to end it, right? So it's like, and let's be clear, this is all pre-pandemic. The article also highlights that we have ghosting as a normal because we are consumed by this sort of busy culture, like we have to be busy and who's the busiest, and thus having to get out of the stuff that we've become over busy with, that we've over promised or we've over committed. And we just have to clear our schedules because either something else conflicts or we're so tired that we can't do anything else. And (laughs) let's be clear, though, when you add in then the technology, it's a wonder we date or have friends at all. And okay, maybe that's a little bit over dramatic, but the technology allows us to disconnect and decline our cancel plans with ease. We may find that messages do get lost accidentally, uh, but sometimes they might get lost purposely, (laughs) right? It's on purpose, right? So technology really added a layer when you would have to call someone on the landline and maybe you hope that they don't answer so you can leave a message. But, you know, (laughs) like the Hunger Hunger Games, you know, the odds may not be ever in your favor, right? They pick up, hey, what's up? Looking forward to tonight. Oh, here's the thing. I can't. Right. So there might be more that happens that people are trying to cancel plans, but but they could before. And now the technology makes it easier. And, you know, in my lying and deception class, we talk about like sometimes maybe we do need to cancel plans and maybe it's not completely ghosting out the relationship. It might be more ghosting out one event. But if this is someone that is not new in your life, it's not a potential partner, it's not a potential friend. It's, it's none of that. It's, it's someone you've been friends with for 10 years that they would probably understand if you're like, oh, I cannot even imagine doing anything tonight other than laying on my couch, right? And they might be like, oh, good. I feel the same way, right? So it's one of those things that, you know, maybe declining an event is we understand and we get it because we're all tired. But that, you know, technology makes it easier to just be like, you know, I'm going to be 10 minutes late, I'm going to be another 10 minutes late, and just keep pushing and pushing and pushing or just easily disconnect as if it's not like we're talking to another human being. (laughs) And one of the things is that maybe it's expected while quote-unquote talking with a potential romantic partner or with dating that you would have some level of expectation that there might be some ghosting, right? You know, that maybe you both swiped right and then you're like, maybe I should have swiped left or just deleted the whole app. (laughs) But, (laughs) and so there might be some level of like, it didn't work out. Maybe it's, it's easier just to move on, but maybe it's also easier to say, you know, we, we went out and, Overall, I had fun, but I don't see us clicking, but I wish you the best of luck in, in, in dating and finding a partner and, and then move on because then it's like at least the other person knows you don't necessarily need to have like a seven hour conversation about why, you know, you went on one date, but it's still nice to be like, you know, thank you for taking the time. I mean, it starts to sound like a thank you note for a job interview, but at least the person would know that they're not going to hear from you again. And they won't have to sit there and wonder and wonder and wonder. So one of the things, though, is that even though it might be expected during dating relationships, it doesn't necessarily mean that it it feels good. But 
maybe there's still this feeling that when friends do it, there's a little more of a burn after the sting, meaning maybe that when it happens with friends that, you know, ghosting hurts a little bit more. And Carolyn Steber with a Bustle Online article in February 2021 says, texting the ghoster might the ghoster friend might help. Some of these suggestions include. So I talked about with dating, like, okay, even just saying thanks or whatever. Here's some of the things you can do if you think a friend is ghosting you and you want to talk to them about it. And and it's one of those things that it doesn't have to be something that's really demanding. It can be low stakes. It's just like checking in. But some of the examples in her article, and there are 20, I'm going to share five, right? Can you send me a quick text to let me know you're okay? So it's just like, I just want to be sure to know that everything's good. Second one, I know you aren't a fan of texting. Are you down for a phone call instead? So maybe it's meeting your friend where they're at and what might be most comfortable in which to have whatever conversation might be coming. And then and a third example would be, I had so much fun last time we hung out. Want to do it again sometime. So it kind of puts the ball in their court, right? And then a fourth example would be, I'll be going to the farmer's market this Saturday I want to come with. So then giving another like invitation that's a little bit more specific. And then the fifth one is, hey, stranger, how's it going? So what I like about this article is it gives you like concrete examples. Maybe not all of them fit sort of who you are or the friendship that you might have had or still have or you're trying to determine if you have or if you're being ghosted. And you can pick out, and it's something concrete. It's not just like, well, maybe they're just not into you anymore. Maybe they just want to move on. And it's like, but closure is really important at the end of romantic breakups. And closure is important in friendship as well. And sometimes, you know, closure isn't going to happen. And I say this all the time. If you don't feel safe, like, then, fine, you know, don't go there. Send a text or not. Just, like, get out of there, right? So there are sometimes, like, you don't need to go and suffer some sort of abuse, you know, in a conversation, emotional, uh, verbal, physical, whatever it might be. You don't need to do that. So sometimes it's going to be like, you know, poof, I'm out. But if it's something like, well, you know, I just found some other friends and I think that's probably going to work better. Well, then, you know, maybe there's a way to send a text message or to talk to them about it, or at least respond when they send you a text message. Because again, you're probably like, well, I'll just ghost them and hopefully nothing ever happens again. Most people might, yeah, they might wonder, but someone who sees you still as a friend is going to continue to reach out. And so then every time they reach out to you, there's probably going to be some level of guilt or frustration or annoyance because you don't want them to do that. You don't want them in your life. But if you've never said anything, then they're going to have questions and they might send a text message like this, gives you a chance to, to write a response back and start a conversation. And they've thrown you a solid there. Like they've done you a favor because you've put all the work on them if you're ghosting them. Because again, the emotional labor becomes theirs, right, when it was your choice to end it. So the response to that email that you get from the person who ghosted you, for example, or even a lack of response can then provide you with an idea about how to communicate back, right? So looking at how they respond that can set up your response back or that you can communicate, you know, the feelings that you are experiencing because you were ghosted, you know? feels like I'm being ghosted and it doesn't feel very good. So, um, you know, like, so there could be some response back and at least that might provide some closure. Right. Um, but here's the thing about this. This is all, you know, what we know about ghosting. You know, I'm talking about it from the point of view, if you're ghosting someone that you're giving them emotional labor and, you know, maybe you just send them a quick text. And then I'm also talking about it in terms of, the ghosty who's confused and is doing the emotional labor and is trying to figure out what they've done and they're asking questions, so on and so forth. It just seems like such like an unnecessary, awkward mess, right? Like ugh, just yucky feelings no matter what side you're on. And again, this is all pre-pandemic, right? So this is 
terrible, right? You have perhaps a plan to deal with ghosting that was pre-pandemic, but what do you do now? We're still in a global pandemic and ghosting seems worse. So what do you think? Do you see an increase in ghosting, whether you've been ghosted or you're ghosting more people? Has the social distance, the lockdowns, and the stress of life in the world brought you to a more solitary life and thus managing a friendship or a relationship seems nearly impossible? So here's the thing, you're not alone. According to Caitlin Wilde's June 2021 Bustle article, the pandemic has probably been a time in which people are cleaning up their, their friend networks. So for example, sometimes people go through their Facebook list. I mean, their meta list. Okay, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> the name is dumb and it's Facebook. Okay, <laughs> but maybe you go through and you get rid of friends that maybe have you know, deleted their account or people you're like, you know, I haven't even heard of this person or from this person in over a year. And you start getting rid of people that way. And so that's one thing that we can do online with social media. You know, it's, it's, we don't make a connection or we're not connected anymore. So I'm going to, you know, chop, chop, snip, snip you out of my life. But that might be what's happening in real life with our networks, right? During the pandemic, because friendships that are more casual, you know, because you work together or considered not as strong as some of your closer relationships may have been eliminated without so much of a text during the pandemic. So Caitlin Well describes this, quote, ghosting as a means to cut back on weakened friendships and that the pandemic sped up a process that might have already been in motion and would have taken years to gradually happen. So think about that, like ghosting someone in life in real life might take a very long time. And the pandemic just, you know, quicken the clock, right? You're on the clock in terms of a phase out. And, you know, the pandemic, it's almost like the bomb's about to blow and the the timer's ticking down faster, 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 faster. Whereas, you know, it might have taken like a year and a half to, to gradually phase out a coworker that you had been friends with that you no longer want to have a friendly relationship with. Right. So in a Refinery29 article from July 2021, Izzy Price talks about how the pandemic has made her more of a serial ghoster. Izzy says, quote, I used to be the world's best replier. I no never left an iMessage or a WhatsApp on red. But after 18 months of the coronavirus pandemic, what I am calling communication fatigue has set in and the text messages frequently stack up. My friends mean the world to me, and I actually think the pandemic has brought us closer, but keeping all my friendships going via phone has been hard to say the least. My phone has become the principal transmitter of my identity in place of my facial expressions or my body language, and that has taken a toll. I just felt exhausted by both my phone and the mundane nature of life under lockdown. How about for you? Has all the zooms and doom scrolling or what we can, <laughs> while well, we could call zooms and dooms, led to your own exhaustion, right? And that being the friend you were perhaps pre-pandemic is more difficult to manage now in the pandemic. I mean, do you ask yourself 13 times a day if you're being a bad friend? And in that article by Izzy Price, she writes that she was avoiding, quote, potential embarrassment over someone else's feelings, end quote. And maybe that's the priority. You know, she doesn't want to experience embarrassment, but it might cause a lot of confusion for the other person in her life. But she refers to Sarah Culver, who is a psychotherapist and relationship therapist in her article. And they say, quote, ghosting is when personal relationships is ended by one party abruptly without explanation, stopping all further contact. It is literally like the person has disappeared. People often behave different online. Technology allows us to hide away behind the screen when we conduct relationships online. It sometimes is easy to forget that we're dealing with another human being with feelings, end quote. So when we can be in the comfort of our own home in our jammies on the couch watching whatever we love to watch and snacking on what we love to snack and the love of all our, our furry friends next to us, and then you send the text message to be like, or just to not do anything that 
we're forgetting that someone might be on the other end waiting for a text message or not understanding why a reply isn't coming or why it's left unread, et cetera. So Izzy says in her article that she apologized to her friends, but that it felt like a little too, a little too little too late, like in romantic relationships where we've dragged this on long enough. And that even a brief conversation, as soon as you could realize that this is about to, someone's about to be ghosted, if you could send that message to the other person, then they can reach some sort of closure and they can move on. And that might even be more important now because loneliness and a solitary life might be more common, making the sting of ghosting in this in this last year or last 18 months or almost, here's the scary part, friends, almost two years, almost two years. And that makes it far, far worse. In fact, according to a Cosmo poll, quote, about 80% of people said they've been ghosted more amid the pandemic than pre-COVID, end quote. So the thing is, we're we're seeing an increase now. So So what happens when I mean, none of us know the the expiration date or the end date on this pandemic, right? So, like, how long is it going to go on? Does that mean the numbers of ghosting will stay high? Does that mean that it will decrease because all the friends who are going to be ghosted were ghosted? Do we have to wait until sort of like a true post-pandemic to see what happens with ghosting? Maybe because we got so good at it during the pandemic, it makes it easier to do. So it just feels like we need to keep an eye on what ghosting might look like during the pandemic and beyond. And to even more think about that people might be more likely to ghost during the pandemic because they're lonely and maybe they're experiencing depression or other symptoms or experiences. So in a Refinery20 article from April 2021 by Molly Longman, that ghosting will always be here. Oh, God, that makes me so mad. <laughs> so it's the new normal. It's worse during the pandemic, and it's likely to stay around for always. That feels like a big yikes, right? And this is especially because ghosting, as described by Medicine Net, is quote unquote heartbreaking to have some level of the same pain that you would have emotionally that you would have from a physical injury. And that overall, they describe it on that same webpage that ghosting is a form of emotional cruelty. And so it sounds like more terrible things that we get to experience in the pandemic are happening. Like it's a laundry list and ghosting is just one of the items that we get to have <laughs> that we get to experience during this pandemic. And is that not Again, we're talking about this because Halloween, like, what is scary? Uh, this is scary. Because the emotional cruelty part would also indicate some level of an intention. And it might not be the case that people intentionally are malicious or trying to be difficult or mean with their ghosting, but that even if it wasn't your intent, that might be the outcome because it's hurtful and confusing and frustrating and so many other emotions when you are rejected, but not directly, right? Like, so what did I do to not even get like a by text, right? So I guess it comes down to if it's the new normal and it's higher in the pandemic and it's going to be here forever and always, what can be done? So a couple of things pulling from some of these articles and just this idea of ghosting and thinking about relationships and thinking about people being lonely and depressed, especially during the pandemic. The first thing is, as a ghoster, remember that when you want it easy, what you're doing is making it harder for the folks you at least consider to be your friend at some point, right? So you're asking for easy and they're not getting any easy that they're it's uncomfortable. It might take a really long time to figure it out. And in some cases, something that has gone on, depending on how long y'all have been friends, it can be particularly traumatic and then it would be might be harder to get over. So then a second thing. So besides remembering that, the second thing you can put into action as a ghoster is even a quick message, like a little texty text or a little, you know, it would be helpful to the ghosty because it 
it helps them make sense of what's going on and what might have happened. So then number three, going to those who've been ghosted. So as mentioned before, you might send that low stakes text message to assess the situation. And then depending on their response, then you can respond back with a appropriate message given their message. Or number four, as suggested by Kate and Wild for Bustle to confront your friend about the ghosting. So it might go beyond the texting. So, and there are three ways or three scenarios in which you might confront the friend about ghosting. And Caitlin Wilde talks about the first one being an abrupt end. And that may be a message. You could do a text or you bump into them, or maybe it's a conversation saying, hey, I stopped hearing from you and it felt sun. I wanted to check in to see if you're okay and that everything was all right between us, end quote. Maybe a voicemail message, maybe a text, maybe a email, whatever the case might be. Because when there's something that ends abruptly, it's like, you know, what happened? But then it might end abruptly because there was a fight. Or if you had a fight, you're not sure sort of where you stand. So you might say something like, quote, I feel like things haven't been the same between us since the last time we saw each other. I care about our friendship and was wondering if we could talk about it or if there's anything we could do to address it, end quote. Again, the messages that you send, you know, versus like before I said, hey, stranger, what's up? This one is a little bit more direct depending on the scenario. Again, abrupt end, had a fight, or the last one, which is the slow fade. Quote, hey, I feel like we've been distant from each other. Do you think we could reconnect? I miss your presence in my life, end quote. And so certainly these might be some concrete examples that you can use and try if you've been on the end of being ghosted. And you might reword them so that it it sounds a little bit more like you because I don't think I say, I miss your presence in my life. I might say something like, I miss seeing your face or I miss you being in my life, but I don't, presence sounds very formal. (laughs) I'm not really sure. So in the end, we already have an epidemic in loneliness, which has been exasperated by the pandemic. So maybe grace for both the ghoster and the ghosty may be necessary. For example, Going back to the beginning example, maybe they are busy or maybe consider as Patia Braithwaite indicated for self in April 2021, quote, it might be a tad unrealistic to expect someone to have an emotional stamina for something new right now, end quote. Sure, she's talking about dating, but new friendships are hard to make anyways, but, you know, they might be even harder having a new friendship in the pandemic because of the same reason, right? Not having the emotional stamina, but also that maintaining friendships could be particularly an extra struggle for people. So maybe it's about taking a break, having a convo, um, but maybe the last thing on on our list should be the ghosting because we know it's going to be particularly hurtful, especially right now in the pandemic. So this is a scary story, friends. Like, I'm terrified chills, shudder, ghosts, I'm tired of you. (laughs) But like maybe we've all been those ghosts. And so we need to think about it from both angles. Like, okay, I've probably ghosted someone when I've been ghosted, right? And it was first coined, ghosting was, in uh, 2006. And it's been normalized by 2020, according to the Washington Post. And at least it's been normalized then. It was probably normalized before that. And with the pandemic has made it more of a crisis. So with this knowledge, it's important to consider how it might continue and follow us in the future and how we might respond to it. So if it's here for always and forever, and it's going to be at the same level of intensity as it is now in the pandemic, how do we go about dealing with that? And that might be an individual sort of reflection in terms of like, okay, how do I go about letting people know that I don't want to continue our friendship? I don't want to continue a relationship or what happens if I'm ghosted? What can I do in response to it? So let me know what you think, right? If you were already scared about ghosting, maybe, (laughs) maybe here I have depressed you a little bit more. And that's not the purpose. My purpose, of course, is always to consider things that can make our friendships difficult. And maybe ghosting people, we make it more difficult for our friends. And when we've been ghosted, certainly our life is a little bit more complicated. But let me know what you think. Do you think that ghosting is worse in the pandemic? Is there something new to ghosting that you're starting to see in the pandemic? 
And what do you think the future looks like for ghosting? Or if you have any stories you'd like to share, feel free to email me at friendswithalisa at gmail.com or find me on social media. I'm friends with Elisa everywhere, except for Twitter, where it is friends W Elisa. And so thanks for listening. I appreciate all of your support. And until next time, friends, consider if you ghost or how you may respond to ghosting, because without our friends, who would we be? Thanks for listening to Best Forevers. If you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe, rate, review, and of course, share with a friend. Please be sure to follow Best Forevers on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Best Forevers Pod, and I'm at Dr. Lisa Lucas on Twitter. You can always find the podcast webpage for more information at bestforeverspod.com and share your stories of friendship by emailing me at bestforeverspod at gmail.com. And if you'd like to support the movement to love on our friends more, check out the podcast on patreon.com forward slash bestforeverspod. Now friends, check out this recommended podcast that you must get in your ear holes immediately.